Hello, and I'd like to welcome you to Wired to Win Total Golf. This is David Breslow. Here I am waving. Hello there. Uh, this is a brief introduction to the program, and this is for prospective students as well as teaching pros. I uh, just want to give you an idea and a flavor of what goes on in the program. It'll be a little bit of a combination of what you're seeing here now with a slide and a camera. Well, I'll be talking and that camera will go on and off at different points during the program. So let's get started right away. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, uh, 26 years I've been a peak performance coach. I've made appearances on the Golf Channel and I used to be the weekly contributor, mental game contributor to the Golf Channel for a couple of years. I work with PGA professionals, LPGA professionals, Champions Tour golfers and the Development Tour golfers as well as college and high school. Um, I've worked with pro and amateur golfers almost this entire time, over 25 years. And uh, that's a little bit about me. I don't want to spend too much time on that. You're welcome to Google me and find out all a bunch of information. So Teaching Pro, let's talk about you and your students for a moment. Your students are already loyal. They already hire you and they love your expertise. I created this particular program because I want to help make them even more loyal. Um, I used to be a teaching pro in the tennis world. And I understand the mindset and the monthly habit of, of the teaching pro. We're always concerned about our lessons, how much and how many. And um, there's nothing better than having a loyal following that shows up regularly time after time after time. And that's what I wanted to help create with this. Um, I'm going to be offering something that your students won't get anywhere else. Like I said, I've been doing this almost 30 years. And... I have never seen anything else like this on the market in terms of the traditional sports psychology and so on and so forth. So throughout the program, I'm always focusing on you and the student. Um, I'm making that connection all the time. And this is something I really want to be more of a, an attitudinal thing. I just want the student to realize that uh, all my communication is going to be linking them with you. I don't want them to see this or even you to see this as a, as a separate thing. Uh, students will be going through this program while they're still taking lessons from you. So uh, again, it's a mindset. I just want them to see this as a, as a team kind of effort. And by the way, what I'm teaching everyone completely complements your teaching style. So whatever your particular perspective is on psychology or mental game kinds of things, uh, this, what I'm doing, and I'll show you in a moment, completely complements whatever your style and belief systems are. Nothing will go against it. So and the first thing I say to everybody when they're in the program is, you know, your pro invited you here because they believe in you and they care about you and they want you to have every advantage. And that's exactly what they're going to get in this program. So here's what you can count on from students going through this. Number one. They're going to be able to speed up the learning curve with you because they're in a better shape mentally, physically, and emotionally. They'll be able to take what you're showing them and demonstrate it more quickly, which is great if you're a teaching pro. Also, their behavior is going to shift. Behavior that normally takes weeks and months in other programs is going to occur in days, literally from day one. From session one, day one, all sorts of things begin to change because of law number one that they learn. They're also going to reduce those annoying periods of poor play. You know, when we talk about, um, you know, I went through a streak of two or three holes and didn't play very well, those things are going to start to disappear as a result of going through the program. And, of course, performances are going to be at much more of a consistently higher level as a direct result. And one of the very cool things, golfers will be self-reliant because they will be able to self-correct out on the course, right where it needs to happen. One of the automatic byproducts of this program. So here's the premise of Wired to Win. What we're really doing is putting everybody back into alignment. Now, what do I mean by alignment? I mean alignment of mind, body, emotion, and energy. I've discovered over the years that what we all have really been looking for, this missing link, when it comes to performance, 
that we look at in any number of different ways. We go, we, you know, we hire coaches, we go to sports psychologists, we read books, we get articles, we buy uh, videos, we buy CD programs. All these things that golfers do are all in the hopes of alignment, whether they know it or not. It, it finally dawned on me several years ago that that's really what's happening. You're looking for alignment. I'm looking for alignment. Your students are looking for alignment. It's just we never thought about it that way. But that's really what we're doing. We want to be aligned mentally, physically, and emotionally, and energetically. Because when we are, I can say to you, whenever a golfer is in alignment, everything they do, they will do better. Everything they do, they will do better. So this thing we call a mental game, for the most part, for, for most golfers is confusing, it's vague, it's frustrating to learn, especially in the traditional way that it's been taught. With all the psychology and the tips and the strategies, it's just, it's overbearing for most people. They've tried it, they're tired of hearing about it, they're tired of these recycled tips going around, they get them all over the internet, it's the same thing all the time until they come to Wired to Win and they see that there's a much better and faster way to get the same results. And it's through these laws that I'm talking about. And the laws that I'm talking about are the laws by which your mind, body, and emotions function together to produce outcomes. These are things the other models are just not talking about. So in this particular approach right here, there are no confusing psychology pieces of information, none. No psychology whatsoever. No vague theories that you have to untangle and try to figure out how to understand or process. And there's no overload of information. Let's face it, golfers don't need more information. They need less. They need information that will help them access alignment. And that's one of the biggest issues I have with the traditional approaches. They're not teaching us how to access alignment, if they're even using that word. So no overload of information. People have tried that already. It doesn't work. Less is more, and they know it. They just don't know how to go out in the golf course and actually demonstrate less is more. But they will. They go through this program for sure. So good advice turns bad. This is interesting. Most pros I talk to will tell me, well, some, not everybody, will tell me, hey, Dave, I teach the mental game already. Well, I can tell you, I'm pretty certain it's not like this. What the majority of pros I talk to are doing are the, the usual things. They're pulling articles out of magazines. They're talking about the traditional books that are out there, where basically everybody is, is telling you what you should be doing, but they're not really telling you how to get there. Everybody knows what the, what the traits are. Everybody knows what they want to be doing out on the golf course. They're just waiting for somebody to show them how to access that and do it regularly. And that's exactly what Wired to Win does. So there's a simple reason that it's difficult and confusing. I talk about it in the session one. I'm not gonna go into detail of it here, but it's very simple. Basically, all of us have, I call it circle one. And when your students come back to you and they say circle one, you're gonna know what they're referring to. Circle one includes all of your history, all of your all of your habits, all your limits, your negativity, your limited beliefs, and your experiences, and all that stuff that really wasn't so great. That's all in circle one. The problem is your good advice when you give it to your students is good advice. I know it is. I already know that's true. The problem is they can't hear you. You don't know, or you may not realize, or not aware yet, that that information, as good as it is, is bumping up against the circle one garbage, I call it, that's already sitting there from experience. So your words aren't getting in. So when they go out to the golf course and try to implement these things, they're either working way too hard to do that, or taking way too long to do that, or it's really not working. So they get frustrated, and that's why they get frustrated. It's the approach that makes all the difference. Anybody can talk about the, the keys to better performance, you know, confidence, clarity, handling adversity better, reducing stress. Everybody knows what they are, but why aren't they demonstrating them on the golf course or in your golf lesson? It's the approach that makes all the difference. It's the approach in Wired to Win that separates it from the crowd. So the performance laws do this. They influence everyone. They bypass age gender, personality type, and experience and skill level, 
any other factor you can think of are non-factors, okay? Uh, other models can't say that. But in this particular model, it bypasses all of those filters, all of those things that can eventually create an obstacle do not exist anymore. These laws are precise in the way that they function and they're predictable in their outcomes. Really, really cool to know. And one of the best parts is they're all provable. I don't want anybody to believe me just because they think I'm an expert or a guru. I get called all sorts of great names, which are, you know, nice for the ego, I suppose. But it's the laws that are running the show and they're provable. So I don't want anybody believing me just because I said it. You don't own it when that happens. I want all students to own it because when they go back out on the golf course, they can rely on that. They can rely on themselves. And one of the last important factors is your belief in the laws is not required and your opinion is irrelevant. I don't know how many places somebody can go to and hear something like that. Really? My beliefs not required? I don't have, my beliefs don't matter? Yes, that's right. Your beliefs don't matter uh, because we're talking about laws here. So here's what I'm talking about. Here's an example. One example, physics. As a golf pro, you're teaching the law of physics, right? When the face of the golf club meets the golf ball, the golf ball has a very precise and predictable reaction, right? Of course it does. So if the face is open, that ball is going to slice. If the face is closed, that ball is going to hook. If the face is flat on contact, that ball is going to go straight in that particular direction. That is the law of physics. So if we're out on the golf course and somebody's slicing the ball all over the place and they don't really want to, you can't turn to me and say, hey, Dave, that law doesn't work. <laughs> I'm sorry. The law works beautifully. They always do. They're infallible. You can't mess with them. You can't break them. You can't cut them. Okay? The law is working beautifully. You may just not be using it very wisely, but the law always works. Second example, everybody knows about gravity. Okay? Everybody knows about gravity. So here's the deal. Let's say you and I are up in an airplane. We're going to parachute. We're 15, uh, 1,500 feet above the ground. Uh, the door opens, you step over, and before you step out, you turn to me and you go, Breslow, I don't believe in gravity. Great. What's going to happen when you step out? That's right. You know. You're going down. Why? Because I say so? No. It's a law. So what's the point of this? The point is that physics and gravity don't care what you believe they don't care what I believe. They don't care what your student believes. They don't care what anybody believes. They're producing an outcome regardless of what any of us believe. That's the point. Now, how cool is that? Can it get any more clear and more direct than that? That's what works in this program. But here's, what, here's what's so funny. Everybody I tell this to understands. They go, okay, Dan. Yeah, I understand. My belief doesn't impact how gravity functions at all. I get it. What they don't get is that their game is also under the influence of laws that are just as precise, just as predictable, just as undeniable, and just as provable as physics and gravity. And that's really where I'm beginning. So I'd like to uh, have you listen to a couple of excerpts from the actual program. Uh, I'm gonna turn the camera off for a moment. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hear a pause. When you hear a pause, don't go anywhere. I'm still here. Uh, uh, that's just that was just happening in the editing, uh, showing you these are excerpts from the actual program. So let's start that now. There'll be a brief pause, and then here we go. Okay, so in this session, we've been talking about building the foundation of the Wired to Win program and the insights and some of these performance truths that I've uh, discussed with you. And I can tell by your comments that you've been sending me so far that your point of view has already been stretched out. You're already seeing things differently and we haven't even talked about the laws yet. So that's awesome. So thank you for sharing that guys. So let's talk about the laws now. You've heard me say the word a couple times. What is a law? Let me give you the definition I'm working with so that we are on the same page, okay? And this is in your study guide as well. Here is what I'm calling a definition of a law. Something that is true for everyone, everywhere, and at all times. Now, 
could it get any more clear than that? Everyone, everywhere, at all times. There's no gray area here. There's no doubt. There's no hesitation. You cannot run. You cannot hide. There are no yeah buts, okay? You can't say, yeah, but Dave, you know, I, I, I kind of get it on the, on the first hole, but on the, on the ninth hole, I don't know. Sorry, won't fly, cannot do that. There are no gray areas here. And by the time you get to the, the laws and, and we're done with this program, you're going to know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> That's what I tell everybody. Uh, but I mean that in a positive way. So there will be no excuses now because now you know how powerful you are. Now you know how your mind, your body, and your emotions and your energy are working to create these outcomes. And you also know that the laws that I'm talking about are the laws by which your mind body and emotions and energy function together to produce outcomes. Infallible, unquestionable. You cannot mess with these things. Okay. And let's talk about the mental game for a moment. Everybody knows the phrase. It's all over. It's all over the internet. It's everywhere. Many people use the phrase mental game. So tell me, how much of the game do you think is mental? How much of the sport of golf do you think is mental from 1% to 100%? Okay, I see some answers coming in, 10%, mm, 90%, okay, 20, 25%, 35%, oh, 95%, 90%, mm, 60%, 70%. Okay, I think you're starting to get the idea. When I travel the country and do presentations, I ask this question, I often get the same kind of range of answers. We're all over the place on this, right? Uh, this mental game thing is very personal. Lots of people have opinions about it, so on and so forth. Here is the average nationally. It's 75%. 75% of the game is mental, golfers will say. What if I said to you, it's 100% and I can prove it? Anytime I say that, I get some really interesting looks from golfers. But as you know in this program, I prove everything that we're talking about, and I've been proving it up until now, and I will – not, I won't stop now. So here is the proof. As I teach it, and maybe that's the only caveat, as I teach it, the mental game is, is made up of four elements. These four elements are not rocket science. They are your mind, your body, which also includes your mechanics, by the way, your emotions, and your energy. Those are the four elements of the mental game as I teach it. Now, that's not the proof. Here's the proof. The proof is every time you put your hands on the golf club, all four of those elements are in play. I dare you to find a time when that's not true. Now, over the years, I've worked with some pretty huge egos, as you can imagine. And sometimes those folks will say to me, hey, Dave, I'm going to find a loophole there. Okay, I'm certain I will find a loophole. I'm going to find a time when that's not true. Okay, go ahead. Guess what? In over 25 years, nobody has found a loophole. So I'm telling you right now, please think about this. Your mind cannot be separated from your body, your emotions, and your energy. You cannot separate those four things. Every time you put your hands on the golf club, they are in play. And they are also impacting your performance because of the laws by which they function to produce outcomes, which is exactly what you're learning in this program. Okay, so we're moving through the program and close to halfway through. You've learned a couple of the laws so far and you've seen the results happening. And I know they're happening because you're telling me that they are. You are thinking differently. You are more clear. You're certainly far more awake than you were before we started. So let's talk about competition for a moment. Not everybody in this program is a competitive golfer, but it doesn't matter because we just finished talking about your definition of competition. And the majority of you use the very common words that I hear most of the time, things like battle, struggle, winner, loser, me versus them, and phrases like that. And after you wrote those down, I just asked you, when you look at those things, whether you get a heavy or a light feeling. And the majority of you said heavy. And the point I was making there, and you completely understand this now, 
is that you're already behind the eight ball before you even step out to the first tee. Only because of the way you perceive competition, it's already creating negative heavy energy. So now I wanna ask you to consider another definition of competition. This is in your study guide as well. So just pay attention for the moment and just listen to me do, and do not be distracted because this is a game changer. And uh, the definition of competition I want you to consider is this, the opportunity to express all my talents fully and freely while overcoming my barriers with ease and awareness. Now you've been doing the last half of this so far in this program. You are overcoming things with great ease because of your new level of awareness. So now let's, put it, let's ratchet it up a notch. I'm gonna ask you to write this down on a three by five card, put it in your bag, put it in your pocket, put it somewhere where you can see it in between shots as you're walking, wherever you might be. Because this definition, now I'm gonna ask you the same thing, light or heavy. Take a look at it again, just read the words, read the words. What is the sensation that you're having in your body? Is it a lighter feeling or a heavy feeling? Well, guess what? 90% say light. So if you were gonna play a round of golf today, and this is the way you approached your round of golf, this was your only goal on your next round of golf. You were only there to express all your talents fully and freely and overcome whatever barriers may come up with ease and awareness. I ask golfers all the time when I'm working with them one-on-one, -on -one, what do you think would happen if you went into your next round of golf with this as your only reason for being there? And the majority, nine plus out of 10, say, I would have a great round of golf, Dave. And they're right. And they're right. What is the, what is the hidden benefit of this? You're in alignment. You have no idea how that happened, but I'm telling you the fact that you felt lighter is an indicator that you're already in alignment. It's very cool. Try it. Okay, so we're nearing the end of the process. Uh, at this point, you're wide awake. You've increased your energy many times over. You've increased your power. You've increased your consistency. You now know how the mind really works. And I'm not, you realize I never threw at you the, the old comment, like, be positive, right? Uh, now you know how it really works. And you also have a terrific routine that incorporates all of these things so that you are in alignment before you step into a dress position. So now I wanna ratchet that up even one notch further because you, you've already been doing this, but now I wanna take it to another level because 80% of the time we are misinterpreting reality. So I wanna now throw at you a really interesting law that puts you in a position to be resilient no matter what is going on on the course, no matter what the conditions are, you will now be able to expand the way you think and you won't be acting and reacting out of habit, which you're already cutting out quite a bit at this point for sure. So here's an example. You hit a poor shot, you get an automatic negative reaction, right? That's what a lot of people do. But you're about to find out that that automatic habitual reaction doesn't have to happen anymore. It's only happening because you're used to having it happen. So in this particular law, it's going to shift that in the snap of a finger. I'm going to give you four questions after I discuss this law just for a few minutes. And these four questions are going to put you in position to expand your mind in ways that you never thought possible. For up until this time, you have been assuming that things are what they are because that's the way they have always been for you. A lot of that has changed already for sure, but now we're taking this up another level. So you are going to now be able to look at things in a fresh new light where you never thought you could before. And that's what those four questions are going to do for you. Okay, I'm now back to talking to you. Let me put this video back on for a moment. There we are. So that was a few excerpts from the program. I hope you enjoyed them. But let me now just continue on real quick, almost done here. You see it says the rest of their lives. Here's what's so very cool about this particular approach. The information and what is being learned, these laws never 
ever change. You can rely on them producing outcomes 50 years from now, tomorrow, this afternoon, or whatever time of day it is for you at the moment. These laws never, ever change. And uh, the juniors love that. Uh, the parents of the juniors, for sure, because these laws, these 15-year-old, these 16-year-old, year old, 16 year old, 19 year old whatever they are, they will be able to rely on the benefit of these laws producing outcomes, whether they ever touch a golf club again or not. In their lives, they will be more clear. They'll be making better choices. They will understand how to create instead of react, which is an automatic byproduct of this program. Golfers that are going through this are not reacting anymore. They're creating what they want. That's the difference between this and traditional approaches. And on top of that, they're gonna know how to use these laws in any situation in life. It doesn't matter where they are. So that's one of the just really terrific benefits of going through this particular program. So in a nutshell, here's what's really happening with the laws. I'm gonna turn this video off for a moment. There we go. Here's what's really happening. Starting from session one, golfers are already more confident just because of that law. They're more awake, they're more conscious, they're making better choices. And then we're moving on to increasing power and consistency because their understanding of energy is different than they've ever heard before. So now they understand the power of what energy really means in terms of their performance and in terms of their golf swing. Then you're gonna know, then they're gonna know what to focus on and why. This law really talks about the power of the mind in a way that most have not heard before. It's not about positive thinking. They, nobody will ever hear me say that because everybody knows that already. You don't need to, you know, need it to remind you that being positive is important. Um, this is way beyond that. And then all that's being put together in a beautiful, easy to apply routine that is designed to optimize alignment. And then adaptability. Uh, you heard me talk about that in one of the uh, examples, in one of the uh, examples from the program a couple moments ago about resilience. Adaptability is just another word for resilience. Golfers will be able to understand how to adapt to any situation in a way they never thought possible. And then I'm going to talk about creating a new vision of themselves and the game. See, up until now, I wouldn't have done that at the beginning because you heard me mention it earlier, circle one and all that garbage in there. To create a new vision would just be using that, those garbage ingredients. You're not gonna create a new vision out of that. But at this point, they are now in what we call circle two. And that's where all the possibilities and opportunities sit. So now we create a new vision of themselves and of the game of golf. And then we wrap it all up with some ongoing tools that, uh, that uh, foster what they've learned into a longer ongoing experience. But again, the laws never change. So these ongoing tools help them gain access over a period of time. So let's team up. I'm gonna turn the video back on again for a moment. Let's team up. This is what I would really like to do. If you are a student listening to this, contact your pro to register. If you are a pro listening to this, I would love to speak with you about this program and the benefits uh, that are well beyond what you've heard in this short video. Uh, send me an email, david.a.breslow at gmail.com and let's talk. I would love to team up with you and I would love to hear from you. So thank you very much for listening. David Breslow signing off. Take care.